is who you are. Is who you are. Is who you are. Is who I am. Is who I am. Is who I am. Perfect in all of your ways. You are. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God as we can come together and worship. Amen. Thank God for his glorious presence here. And thank God for each of you. Amen. Amen. I'm kind of behind the scenes trying to get some stuff together. But amen, we praise God for each of you being here with us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. 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 Well, for those of you who have been tuning in with us, I understand we're already live, so we just welcome each and every last one of you here to the House of Bread to Greater Bethlehem Christian Assembly. For those of you who are here, so glad you have chosen to be here with us today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, we've been having our, uh, our clergy appreciate month. We featured all of our uh, ministers here, and we have just had a great time of celebration. And, and today is my first day back in the pulpit of a month. So it's a, a good time just to be with you. Amen. 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 We just thank God for each and every last one of you. All right. Well, look, we're going to go right into the word. I'm going to ask you if you'll open the book to the, uh, open the word, rather, to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ah, uh, Ecclesiastes, that's where we're going to begin today. For those of you who are looking, just find the book of Proverbs and look at the next book, Ecclesiastes. Amen. Amen. If that doesn't work, then just use the table of contents. We're going to all work it and find it together. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, amen. As we are here gathering today, again, I want to just welcome each and every last one of you, and thank you for being here uh, with us today. As we begin to just praise God, welcome the, welcome the presence of God today. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is where we're going to be. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And as you begin to turn, I'm going to ask that for those of you who are watching at home, get your Bibles, get some paper and pencil, and let's begin to search the Scriptures together to make sure we all uh, are seeing what the Word of God declares. When you have it in the house, if you please stand, I believe in reverencing God's Word by standing. If you can't stand, then stand. The Word of God says, let everything that have breath, then just praise the Lord. And this morning, as we have breath, we thank God for the ability to stand. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, the scripture declares, and to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to win and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate eleven. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. And he also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning. Father, we thank you this morning as we gather together, Lord God, to honor you, to bless you, Lord God, to give you great praise, Lord God, for you are deserving. What time is it? It is time for the people of God to praise the name of the Lord. It's a time for the people of God to exalt their God, their Lord, their Savior. It is a time for us to wake up and to begin to just come in the presence of God. Father, we thank you for our time today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Have you ever gotten on the interstate and watched people driving throughout the city as they're traveling along the roads? Some drive slowly, others drive hurriedly, intently, and perhaps, like me, speeding to their destination. The difference oftentimes between the drivers is related to their time. You see, some may have started out early, so they're not in a rush. And others may have started late, and they're trying to make up the time. Some just out there, they just lose their mind because we fail to realize that with every bit of time that God gives us, there is a purpose. There is a purpose for all of the time that you and I have been given. You see, time is an important part of our lives. It gives orders to our days. And as we begin to create and set schedules, there is no, no need to create a schedule if you will not abide by the time. Mm. You see, if you have charted no place to go, then how will you know when you get there? It is no need to keep up with time if you're not going anywhere. Understand that a parked truck is going nowhere. And we have to understand today that time is a gift from God to you and to me. People who are in no hurry think everyone else has time. There are times when people have nothing to do with their time, so they come and they waste your time if you let them. Oh, hallelujah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There are times that people feel alone, and they need someone to give them some time. There are other times where people may just barge in your office and not be concerned about what you're working with because they think, what they have to say is more important and needful of your time. Let me ask you, what time is it? Uh-huh. Oh, what time is it? The book of Ecclesiastes says to everything, there's a time. There's a time for everything. Now, let's look at King James. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. The new King James declares to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. The Good News Bible says everything that happens in this world happens at the time that God chooses. And the ETRV says there is a right time for everything, and everything on earth will happen at the right time. 
I need you to know that this set lets you and I know that time is significant. We may be right, but we may be right at the wrong time. Uh -huh. Everything is significant when it relates to your time. I did a funeral a couple of years ago, and I found out the age of the deceased, and I began to map out how many days, how many hours that he, in fact, lived. You see, each of us have been given time. So many of us, we take our time for granted. And when you fail to value the amount of time that's given to you, oftentimes we find ourselves wishing we had more time. You see, parents are happy when their daughter who is married comes to tell you that she is about to give birth to a grandchild. They're happy. Why? Because it's at the right time and is within the right purpose. But then can those same parents be happy when their 16-year-old tells you she's pregnant and not married? You see, there is a right time and a right purpose for everything under the sun. So when we consider what time is it, what are you doing with your time? You see, Webster defines time as a sequential order of things. That it is the past, the present, the future. It is a system of measurement of how long we have been in place or dealing with something. We establish time in terms of what's past, what's previous, and what's to come. But I need you to know that as we deal with time, we're dealing with, with terms that we have failed to realize. Measured time is when we deal with our our seconds, our minutes, our hours, our days, our weeks, our months, our years. But then there's another time. This is a time where different things should have been done at a specific place or time in your life. I like when Isaiah 6 and 1 declares, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord, high and lifted up, and a train that filled the temple. He sets the time. When did it happen? It happened when King Uzziah died. So he began to say something of a marvelous nature of something that was so extravagant happened at this time. Maybe some of us who are, Lord, we're about to date us now. Maybe where were you? when President Kennedy was assassinated. You see, many of us remember exactly where we were. Where were you when the Twin Towers were bombed? Uh, where were you? And you can set your time. It was at the time that the towers were bombed that I was wherever you may have been. See, many of our conversations center around time. And for people who are not knowledgeable of, godly, of God's intent and purpose for your time, we often ask about time in various ways. How old are you? When did you move to this city? How long have you been married? Mm -hmm. When are you going to finish this assignment? You see, we measure time in various degrees, and we're looking at things to establish where we are. But I need you to know God is not interested in how old you are. Some of us have fooled ourselves. The that you came, God says, now I got a plan for your time. And in that plan for your time, God put an expiration date on when you're going to leave up out of here. You can do all the exercise you want. You can take all the vitamins. You can sleep at the right time. You can eat the right foods. But I'm going to tell you, when your time is up, mm -hmm, up and out of here. That's why James 4.14 says, what is your life? It is nothing more than a vapor 
here today. Won't he won't send me no buck eye, big, big nose, uh, big feet, man. He knows what I'm looking for. Well, who said God is here to occupy your purpose? Uh -huh. You see, well, God knows uh, that. I got to have the best of the best. I want the five-bedroom home. I want this kind of income. I want this. I want that. And so now we got this theology. All I got to do is name it, claim it. All I got to do is tag it, bag it. All I got to get, get somebody to agree, high-five somebody, slap somebody. And you think that's going to bring it up. You wonder why you still don't have it. God got a purpose in this. And God's purpose is that none of us would perish, but that we all will have everlasting life. So why is God allowing you to live this purpose in this amount of time? Could it be that God has a plan for you? I don't know enough scripture. I ain't been in church long enough. I don't know. It don't matter what you don't know. God has a plan, and he's already planted it in your heart and mind, and it keeps coming back and forth, back and forth. You keep dismissing it. You can turn up the stereo, turn on the TV. You can do everything, but the plan still exists whether or not you acknowledge it or not. You see, when God created us in time, there is a certain time that God is looking for you and I to become mature. Because it's at the maturity of you at that time that God gets the greatest reward out of it. Simply because God has made us to be eternal beings that have been placed in the midst of time. And so Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says he has made everything beautiful in this time. Now, I don't know about you, but I hear some of y'all when you had your little babies and everything. Isn't he so cute? Isn't she so cute? And I'm looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you say, well, every baby cute. Okay, well, thank God. Praise God. Uh-huh. <laughs> you see, when we come out, when we start out, we don't look like where we're going to be. But let that baby start growing. And let that little form start where, where now uh, you got a big head and big feet, but the body is this way, whatever it may be. Like, what's going on? But give them time. And everything begins to fill out, and everything now begins to come into form. You say, oh, that is a handsome boy. That's a handsome man. That's a beautiful woman. And why? Because it took time to get to that point. When the Scripture says that he made everything beautiful in his time, He's still waiting on us to get to the point that we can see our own beauty. There's beauty inside you, and it is not skin deep. God has put something in you that is so valuable, so beautiful, that is of such great worth. You need to stop letting people put you down based on what's on the outside and realize I got beauty working on the inside. Oh, hallelujah. He's made everything beautiful. What does that mean? That means that when we come to a time of maturation, it means when we come to a point of maturity, there's a time where things got to grow before it begins to look like something. Uh, there was a time when I had a garden, and I planted, uh, tilled up the back, and, and I planted rows, set rows, and put seeds and everything in there. And I would go out from time to time to look at those seeds and see what's taking place. Eventually, some little sprout begin to come out, and I see it begins to develop a little bit more. Okay, all right, looking like something now. Now we've gone in some time, a couple of a couple of months now, and now it's full grown, and then full grown begins to blossom, and in the blossom, I begin to see some fruit on the vine. I begin to see some things happen. Why? Because in the time of maturation. It begins to look beautiful. Now you say, oh, look at my God. Look how beautiful these uh, tomatoes look. Look how beautiful the squash is. Well, can I tell you, you the tomatoes, you the squash, God has been looking at a point where you begin to shine with his beauty. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So when we consider that he makes everything beautiful in his time, oh, you got to say, oh, you ain't got to tell me. I, this beauty, it literally means it's a time of perfection. 
God is saying that when you and I can get out of our childish ways, get out of our bickering, get out of our backbiting, get out, get out of our conniving and our scheming, get out of our trying to have our own way, get, get out of us trying to run a game on somebody, when you can begin to operate at another level, are uh, beautiful. Oh, hallelujah. You see, God is waiting. Here is what have I done with what God gave me? What are you doing? You 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. What are you doing with your time? How many times are you going to keep watching reruns of Gilligan's Island and search for them all? You've seen everything. You know what's there. Why are you continually wasting your time doing the same thing that don't matter, that won't add no value to your life? You keep going through the same thing the same way, and you wonder why you can't work things out better. Oh, John MacArthur says, John uh, uh, says that uh, it's called, uh, it's, it's just called uh, craziness. I'm trying to think of the term moronic. Uh, it, uh, it is called ignorance to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. What is your life looking like every day when you get up? What are you doing? After you get up, what are you doing with your time? Some of us say, well, I'm trying to pray, but, but I got to do this. I have to do that. And, and Okay, okay. Tell me, when do you get back to praying? If you say that prayer is the most important thing, and if Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, God is saying, put me first. How much of your time are you giving him? Okay, I'm eating, I'm getting ready to eat my breakfast. God is great. God is good. Now I'm thankful for my food. Or Amen. Is that your prayer? Is that the only time? You see, how much time are you giving to the purpose of God? Ecclesiastes says there's a time for every purpose under the sun. There's a time. There's a time for the purpose God raised you up. Why? And look, we need to get rid of all that carnality. Man, he going to, you ready to stop all your drama? Why are you here? Because can I tell you, the same one that had the Coca-Cola bottle uh, shape back in the teens, you got a three liter now? Don't talk about it. Uh, don't talk about it. It is what it is. So you're, eventually, time will tell a difference. It'll tell a difference. So now, the time. I'm going to ask you again, what time is it? You've made every excuse to do everything that you desire to do. What time is it? You see, God is looking for maturity when his vessels, when his children. You see, as we begin to look at there is a specific to accomplish that purpose. I mentioned John F. Kennedy, but can I tell you, with all the time that he had, even though he was assassinated, you know he didn't have time to make out a will? How many of you keep putting it off? Huh? How many of us have said, I'm going to stop by so-and-so's house. I know they're sick, and I know I need to go by and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me ask you how much time, how many times are you going to keep putting it off before you get the word? They're gone now. Uh -huh. You see, we don't realize how much time we waste. There's a time that uh, our kids began to go to school and they had to catch the school buses. Unlike us, we had to walk to school. But bottom line is what happened is that they had to be at the bus stop at a, at a certain time. If they didn't make that time, they running after the bus. And if they were my kids, you walk into school. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, because you can realize you can keep messing up your time, and too many people mess up their time, try to impact your time with their need. It's time. It's time now. We got to straighten this thing up. Why did we leave here too soon? Another seemingly stay too long. There was a song that came out years ago where the preacher was saying there was a major bus accident and all, and he lost several of his members. And he cried out, God, why did you take them now? And he says, God says, because they were ready. In other words, you got the rest of them who still need to get ready. Uh, you see, when God creates you for a specific purpose, 
There is time that has been set aside to accomplish it. You see, it requires a paradigm shift. Years ago, I preached a sermon called The Paradigm Shift, and it was here that I began to look at the Swiss, who were the number one watchmakers in the world. If anybody bought a watch that was made by the Swiss, it was known for its accuracy, for its beauty. It, would, it cost a high amount or, or was high price. The Swiss were known for their precision-made watches, Rolexes, and everything else that some of us wish we could afford. And here, each year, the Swiss, they had the annual watchmaker convention. And at the annual watchmaker convention, each of the people or countries or businesses that made watches will come and showcase their latest watches. Well, at this particular convention, that the, the Swiss had also one of their own Swiss who came out with this new watch. They looked at watchmakers that had such a, a, a monopoly on watchmaking that they literally, they literally had 90% of the people in the country working in factories making watches. At that watchmaker convention, there were two companies that saw that cheap imitation watch. One of them was called Seiko of Japan. And the other, they end up putting the Swiss out of business within 10 years. This money just to impress people with a high-priced watch when all we need is to know the time. If I look at your hands today, any of you who got, have a watch, it's probably made by one of those. That quartz spot is made by them. Ah, uh, why did you tell us that, Pastor? Because sometimes if you don't do what's given to you to do in your time, you will miss the opportunity. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us, we've missed time. We know God had given us time. But Lord, I'm too tired. I just need five more minutes of sleep. I just Lord God, uh, I, I, I don't know enough. I just need to go back to school in maybe five years, and I'll get it together then. And you'll start making excuses, but there is no excuse when there is purpose locked up in your life, and you don't take the time to find out what it is about. Why are you here? What is your purpose? What has God designed you to do? Now, I know that some are called to be apostles and prophets and pastors, evangelists and teachers. All right, we got that out the way. But what are you called to do? What is God called? Well, does that mean everybody have to be in the church? No. You don't think God needs some people on Wall Street? You don't think he needs people in the hospitals? You don't think he needs people in the school system? You don't think he needs people in your community running your government or whatever? What is your purpose? Are you here? Why? You see, God's creation revealed that God desired a time when his product would begin to showcase his glory. That's why the word of God says, in the day you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. How many of us have shut the voice of God off when God wanted to elevate you and bring you in something better, something more, but we got fearful? We didn't take the time to listen. We thought that somebody else's stock was better than ours, but you knew God was calling you. How many Michael Jordans missed the opportunity to go to the basketball crowd? How many musicians and singers just thought that somebody else could sing better than them, and so they didn't go? Huh? How many of you have been called to operate and open up your own business? You can run things, and yet you're still working for somebody who's paying you minimum wage. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time? You measure your days, your weeks, your months, your years. You measure it. And tell me, how, what's the value of everything you've wasted? How does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? God has given time to you and I to accomplish his plan. And God's original purpose is that you will live forever. That's why he brought us into time. But at the end of this, he puts us in eternity. Now, the bottom line is, where do you spend eternity? Oh, let me ask it this way. To what does God say, well done, good and faithful servant to? Some of us think, oh, he's saying that simply because uh, I, I, I'm in church right now. Is that what it is? To what is God going to say you have done well? For what? 
You know he's called you to just talk to your family, coworkers, community about him. You know that he wants to use you to be his hands to bless someone else. But you know he's called you just to, just to show our love, compassion, mercy towards somebody who maybe is going through, but somehow I don't know the right words to say, so I won't go. What has he called you to do? In your heart right now, there is something you know that God called you to do. What are you doing with it? Mm. So God's question to you is not how long you have lived. His question even is not, uh, his question rather, rather is what have you done with the time I gave you? You see, the word of God says, for we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. We think that only means our actions. What if we have to give an account also for our time? What did you do? How often were you still laying in the bed when you knew it was time to get up? Maybe you said, well, uh, it's time for me to get a job, but I'm not going to turn no burgers. I'm not going to sweep no flow, and your kids are still there hungry. Well, you tell me, what are you doing with your time? Some of y'all, you may be taking care of some grown folks just as grown as you, and all they can do is sit home and play a video game, and you go off and get a job. What are you doing with your time? Mm. Uh, let me tell you how Jesus dealt with this thing of time. He instructed people not to move faster than what it was given to them to do, but move in accordance to God's time. When I look at John chapter 2, Verses 1 through 4, the scripture declares that it was on the third day that a wedding took place in Cana, a Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus says, dear woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. You see, there's a time that is given to us to do some things. Now, some of us get so emotional and so full of zeal, but not according to knowledge, that we go ahead of the time trying to do some things that we're not qualified to do. And when you fall flat on your face, you wonder, well, God, why did this happen? I was trying to do what you called me to do. And did you get ahead of God? Jesus says, wait a minute, my time has not yet come. So Jesus is operating on the time, letting you know it is at a certain time that I will begin to do something, but I don't get ahead of that time. Now, don't let that be an excuse because you still know that everything still has a time. When I look at Jesus' consciousness of time, you're still in John, turn to chapter 12. John chapter 12, look at verse 23. You see, it is there that Jesus before was saying, my time has not come. But now when he gets to John 12, verse 23, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now my heart is troubled. It is for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. You see, given the time when you're in the right time, you know this is the time that you're called to serve the purpose of God. You're not ahead of it. It's now that time. But then we cannot get ahead of the time. See, he further expresses his relationship as it relates to time in John chapter 7. Go back to chapter 7. Look at verse 3. It needs to be told. And the story is, it's appointed that man wants to die, but after that, judgment. Where will you spend your time? You see, we got to tell a real story. We got to stop patricating people and placating people. You got to stop trying to please people. Yes, we can't be so rough that we can't begin to realize that we may need to be able to have some compassion considering thyself. For such were the manner of some of you, but now you've been washed. Uh, so we have to realize we've been given time. So what do we do with our time? We have to realize it's time to give God the glory. It's time to begin to realize that 
As we begin to move in time, we want to move according to God's time and not according to what we think and how we feel. You know, too many people miss the mark because I just feel. I have something telling me. I just feel like we got to do something right now. God telling me they ain't God, that's you. And it's time you wake up and realize that God is not pressing anybody at that point to try to get ahead of him. He wants you to be in his time. Can I tell you, little girl, you may not be ready. Uh, Mr. Man, you may think you know more than what you know. You find out you need to sit down and listen. You see, it is not time for some things. But don't let that be your excuse when you know what God has given to you to do. When I look at John 17, the scripture declares, then in verse 1, Jesus is praying. This is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Jesus is praying, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. You have granted him authority over all people that he may give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life. What is eternal life? That they may know you. The only true God. Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. You see, it's time to give God glory. It's time to give God praise. You see, Jesus is saying the hour has come. What time is it? When is your hour coming? Are you waiting until you get on your deathbed? Then they'll say, God, that you, like Hezekiah, if you, if you give me more time, remember what I did, Lord. I, pray, I, I, I did everything you called me to do. And before the prophet can get to the gate, God says, go back and tell him, I'm adding more time. I'm giving him more time. Are you waiting on God to give you more time when you're not using the time he's giving you now? Thanks, we have to understand. We're accountable for the time. It's come a day, I can tell you, come a day that you don't feel like running like you used to. You can't jump like you used to. Your mind is slower than what it used to be. Huh? There's come a time when aches and pains take over. It come a time when all you can do is remember what you used to do. And now you're looking at where has it gone? Mm. Let me tell you this. God always gives you enough time to complete his purpose. So he's asking you, what are you doing with his time? You see, whenever you use things that God has given you toward a given purpose, then it accomplishes what God sent it to do. Let's do the converse. If you waste the time that God has given you, then your opportunity to reach perfection has now been delayed. So who's stopping you except you? It's time to wake up now. Time is always given to complete the purpose. And if we waste our time, we delay the inevitable. How many of us will be at a different place in life right now had we availed ourselves to do what we're supposed to have done in the time that was given to us? But can I tell you something? It's not over. You're breathing, then you still have time. Uh, you see, there is an assignment that God has given you. What is your assignment? What are you called to do? Each one of you have been given an assignment. I find myself that in this point in life, it's time to learn what compassion is all about. Stop being critical. Stop being all about self. Stop being all about what you want. It's time to begin to look at your past the time. You need to pay attention to others. How can you encourage them? How can you help them? How can you better them? You see, back in the day, it was all about moi. But now I realize it ain't about me. It's about you. I don't know how long I have on this planet. But given the time I have, I'm going to do whatever it is to make your walk better. That's the time that's given to me. 
You see, whether or not I have any more accolades on the wall, I got plenty of them. Don't matter. Whether or not I got money in the bank, whether or not I drive the best car or live in the best house, whatever, all those things are temporary. But the thing that will take you to the next generation is called legacy. How much of your time are you putting in somebody else? Those little kids running around your ankle, eventually they're going to grow up. And will they remember the things that you invested in them? Now, some of you say, I used to teach them and train them everything, and they got grown and they departed. You better bring your when you came on the scene. Your time ends when you die. What are you doing with your time? God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the amount of time you've given us. Father, we have seen many leave out of here full. They, leave, they left out of here, Lord God, with the talents, the abilities, the skills that you gave them, and they didn't do anything with it. The cemetery is filled up with people who died not fulfilling all that you placed in their heart to do. Father, I don't want to be like that. Father, I want to use the time you've given to me to accomplish your plan for my life, for my family, for the second, third generation, Father. I want to lead someone to you, Lord Jesus. You have been so good to me. I want them to know the same God that I serve because you have blessed me beyond measure. Father, I thank you. You've given me the activity of my limbs. I have no reason, Lord God, not to use what you've given me to bless you back. Help me, Lord God, to get back on the right path. Help me to know what time it is. For in this hour, you're soon to come back, Lord God. And I want to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, Lord God, even in this hour, I'm asking you even now, wash me or cleanse, wash me again. Cleanse me, Lord God, from all unrighteousness. Cleanse, and I become your slave to serve you all the days of my life. Oh, Father, I'm yours. While God is moving, while the Spirit of God is moving, if any of you desire prayer, come on up. Lord, hallelujah. Oh, nothing with all is nothing with Oh, Surrender to you, O oh God, with holy nothing, 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 with holy nothing. With holy nothing. Ha. With holy nothing. We come into you, O oh God. Holy nothing, holy nothing. Yes. With holy nothing, how we 
gonna say it again with holy nothing. Come on, congregation, with holy nothing. With holy nothing. We surrender to you, O oh God. With holy nothing. With holy nothing. I surrender to you, O oh God. I surrender. Giving it all to your God. Everything I give to you. <laughs> With holy nothing. With holy nothing. Bringing it all to your God with holy nothing. With holy nothing. We bring it all to your God. Thank you for our time, Lord God, together. Father, as you have encouraged us to make the most out of the time we have been given. Father, it's your fruit. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, and that fruit shall remain. Thank you, Lord God. For those of you who've been watching this online, we invite you to continue to tune in. We pray that something has been said to encourage you. And don't hesitate to go right there and drop us a, a message and as a text or use the cash app there to make a deposit to help us build and do some things in this ministry. Thank you. I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen.